She is a financial planner and advisor. She's the founder and president of Zinnia Wealth Management. She's also a popular radio show host. There's a way to have the money to market and have protected growth. This holistic approach will help people get to and through retirement. Absolutely. You have to change the way that you think. It's not about having these double digit returns anymore. Things are changing and you have to have an advisor that's keeping up with the changes. Your outcome is going to become very desirable if you have some sort of coach helping you along the way. And our next recipient for the Media and Communications XP, Sharice. 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 Sharice Rivers. Do not have to risk all your money in the market to survive because it's about the retirement dream. All righty, everyone. Welcome back to another 3.30 segment Facebook Live with your host, Sharice Rivers. That's me. Uh, home of Retirement Coffee Talk and Zinnia Wealth Management. We appreciate you being here every Thursday at 3.30. I want to do a quick note. August 12th, we're going to start moving this to Wednesdays at 3.30, okay? So we're going to have a midweek update. So starting August 12th, Wednesday, we're going to do them at 3.30. My job is to solely inspire you, educate you, and get you to retirement and beyond and I am your host here to help you go down that road. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I know I, I answer a lot of them as I'm going through, but feel free to ask them as we're going through. Quick pregame. Let's talk about the stock market, what's going on with the government. Um, we're going to go into our Zinnia U section where we're going to talk about Medicaid, the Medicaid spend down. If you go into a long-term care facility, important things like that, because I know that's a question. And what the income and asset thresholds are, which is super important. Um, we're also going to do our trivia today. Uh, four questions, two of them come from last week's show. And we'll un see if we have any winners from last week's show. We'll announce it then. And then we have some really cool discounts and local places you can go to um, if you're looking to go on a 30 minute drive away from Ocala or Gainesville. So let's get started. All right. Give me a whoop whoop if you were so excited about the stock market this week. <laughs> I'm sure there's no whoop whoops. Um, the stock market is, is driving me crazy as it does everyone else. And um, the stock market's down a little bit this week. And I'm just, we were hoping this week would be a little pop up, little pop, you know, gold went up. A lot of people are asking, do I buy gold? Do I not buy gold? Hey, this is what I tell you. Don't buy gold when it's high. Maybe wait when it comes down a little bit because what goes up will likely come down and it rose so high, um, it might not be a good time. If the dollar goes down any lower than it's at, then it might be a good buy, says Kramer, if anybody watches CNBC. Okay, let's talk about stimulus checks and all this money that might be coming out. So it sounds like there's going to be another set of stimulus checks coming out, $1,200, $500 for your independence. Um, what else do we have? Unemployment, if you were getting a nice, fat, extra large check because you're unemployed, it sounds like that, those values are going to be coming down. Trying to encourage people to get back to work. Uh, it's, uh, there's more people on unemployment that could be going back to jobs. And by the way, if your boss offers you your job back and you don't take it, you get disqualified from unemployment. So remember that unemployment rates are still going up. So that hasn't stopped. And part of the stimulus package is there's probably going to be uh, another rollout for the PPP loan for small businesses. So we're about to find out what this is all about and see when. Uh, we will be receiving checks and how much and exactly what's going to happen. Um, so that's in our stimulus package here as Senate Republicans. Um, what else drove the market? Did anybody see what happened with Kodak this week? My goodness. I hope you all own Kodak at $8 a share and you sold it at $59. <laughs> so what happened on Wednesday, Kodak uh, got a deal. They got a loan from the government. And Kodak, you know, they do film and they do pictures and their stock has plummeted over the last few years. And but they're, they were still there holding strong at five or eight dollars for you know this past year. But literally Wednesday, there was note and everybody started to get whiff of, hey, we're getting a loan it's going to Kodak. They're going to hire a bunch of employees because the government wants them to create a prescription drug generic type company so people can get drugs more affordably and then hopefully here locally. And so it drove the stock within five minutes from $8 to $26. I watched it happen from like 10 to 10.30. Then it went to 30, then 37, then 49. Guess what I did? 
I had that stock. I held on to it. I sold it right at $59 because I had a feeling it was going to go down. And guess what it did? Two minutes after I sold, it went back down to $30. So hopefully you sold in time. It happened in minutes and in seconds, literally. And so this is why we tell folks, don't go alone on this because if you don't time it right, you could lose your shorts. But if you even still had it, you actually made some money. So you never know what's going to happen in the stock market and what's going to happen with individual stocks. So you want to be paying attention or hire somebody who is, of course. So that actually moved the market a little bit this uh, week. Uh, financials aren't doing too great. And technology, you know, it's still one of the higher ones, but it's still down for the week. So we'll see if the end of the week rolls out a little bit better. Uh, let's talk about Fang and Google and Apple. And who's the other one? Um, Amazon, the big boy in town. They just uh, uh, came off a runoff uh, in Washington yesterday, being hit pretty hard with some major questioning because of all this antitrust laws and issues. And uh, I think they did a pretty good job overall answering it, but the government wants to make sure, you know, everything's legit, everything's happening the way it is. And if not, you might be getting shut down or having some serious fines. So they're not taking it lightly. That shook up Wall Street a little bit, so you know the stock kind of fumbled it a little bit. And so you will have that. Wall Street does not like uncertainty whatsoever. All right, let's move on here. Let's talk about vaccines. We have three companies now that have gotten millions of dollars in money to find a vaccine. And that drove the market a little bit here and there, but it wasn't enough to make it inch up any further this week. And um, I think it was Moderma. Moderma, Moderma. Was it Moderma? I think it was Moderma. They just went into phase three to find out, you know, what the next phase of, you know, to getting the flu vaccine. Remember, phase one is to see if anybody basically passes away. Phase two is very limited. Phase three is the next stage to really um, diving into what the flu is all about and the different antigens and all that inside of it. So hopefully uh, we'll get some good news. They're projecting a vaccine in January. So here's my take on a vaccine in January. Everything always seems to delayed, maybe March. Uh, I hope for January, that'd be a wonderful thing. And, and people get back to normal. We need our economy. We need hospitality businesses moving back. We don't want any rollback. We want to push forward so we can get out of this hole. Because I know a lot of people are hurting from it. Trump news. Let's just dive right into Trump news. Basically, what did he do today? Oh, he canceled the Republican National Convention that was planned in August in Jacksonville. Yep, that was a big talk. That was going to be a big, big deal. And basically, they're turning it into a smaller event in Charlotte instead, you know, uh, with COVID on the rise and, you know, more people getting it and so on and so forth. I said, you know what? Let's not even bring it. So they decided not to. Um, so that's all I have for Trump this week. He didn't get in too much trouble this week. But let's talk about Governor DeSantis. Uh, basically, they are trying to mandate a, a Florida mask rule that no matter where you go, you have to wear a mask. And I will tell you, there are some cities in Florida that's already ruled that in. If you go to Key West, you have to wear a mask. If you don't wear it and you're walking down the street or you're in scooters or wherever you're at, except for when you're sitting down and eating, you get a $500 fine. And then after that, if you're caught again, it's like 60 days in jail. So they're not taking this lightly. They're like, put the masks on because down south, they're, they're, the flu really jumped uh, probably... 75% from when it all started. So, you know, I'm okay with the whole mask rule. I, I just, um, it's like, do people even know what masks to wear? Because I see cloth masks, I see the blue masks, I see the black ones. And, you know, if they're going to put a mandate on masks, they might as well just tell you exactly which one to wear so then you don't get in trouble there. Um, let's just talk about DeSantis spoke Tuesday about rising death toll in Florida. Um, he also pointed that trends were um, slowing down on that, that end. So, we had a rise and now we're having a little fall. Here's the deal. One person says one thing, another person says another thing. Testing's wrong, testing's right. Who really knows at this point? We can't get any real answers because as soon as we get an answer, it changes the next week. Oh, well, they didn't count this or they didn't turn in this. So people just hold tight. This, it's a roller coaster. This pandemic, it's, it's confusing. Nobody really knows who's going to get it, not going to get it, and how it's even passed. So just put a mask on, you know, when you're around people, stay six feet away from people and uh, keep your crowds very small. That's all the advice I can give there. Okay, moving forward to trivia. So 
This is our four trivia questions. Remember, two come from last week, and then there's two fun ones. So recall, you need to put your answers in here by the end of the show, okay? So you can put A, B, C, D on all four, whatever you want. The winner that gets all four of them will get a $100 check sent to the charity of their choice or church. So as long as it's a 501c3, we're going to send you a check with the charity of your choice. And last week, we had no winners. Both uh, We had two people. They got three out of four questions right. So we had no winners next week. I have some money sitting here with checks with your names on it and your charities. Answer some questions so we can get these checks out. This is the fun part. So it's a part of our education from last week. So first question we have from our last any of you, who did I say qualifies for Medicare? Is it people age 65 and over? Is it younger people with disabilities, people with permanent kidney failure, or all of the above? This one should be pretty easy, I would think. Uh, number two, from Zinnia U last week, we talked about which debt did I recommend paying off first when you're trying to get work on getting a loan for a home, if you're giving tips on you know, prepping for that loan. A, the smallest debt. B, the debt with the highest interest. C, student loans, or D, home mortgages. Remember, we said there's good debt, there's bad debt. Let's pay off the bad debt first. Which one of those would that be? Okay, three. Here's a fun one. This is easy. Which 80s movie was the highest grossing film of the decade? In the 80s, was it Die Hard, Bruce, E.T.? Come on, E.T. phone home. That was one of my favorites. Top Gun. Oh, these are tough. And the Breakfast Club. So which one had the highest grossing film? Yeah, that's a toughie. I actually um, got that one wrong myself. Number four, the one question to get to know Sharice a little bit better is, what is my favorite beach? Is it A, St. Augustine? I've talked about all these beaches. B, New Smyrna. C, 30A or D, South Beach? So pretty easy questions. By the end of the show, make sure you put them in the Facebook notes there, and we will announce our winner next week with the answers. Okay, thanks for playing. And uh, you can always rewind it and to get the questions as well. Okay, this is where I do one of my most favorite things, and I get to educate you and teach you. This is called Zinnia U segment. Okay. So there's a big conversation that's been around for a very long time, and it has to do with Medicaid. And Medicaid is for people who are financially destitute. I mean, financially destitute. Um, you can be of all ages and qualify for Medicaid to cover health insurance and certain things. You can even get um, a card today to go pay for your groceries at the grocery store if you qualify. And so um, I've, I've helped with people with Medicaid many times before. And it's really interesting because there's income thresholds and they're very finicky about them. And we're not going to go into the details of Medicaid, but just some basics, because I want to teach you how it works with long-term care. Because there's some people out there that say, Sharice, I have a decent income, but I don't have a long-term care policy. I don't have anything to care for me if um, and I don't have any kids or nobody I would want to take care of me if I needed any nursing home um, care, but I don't think I can afford it. So we want to talk about if you're somebody who can't afford it and also somebody who can afford it. So let's just start with the basics. Um, this Medicaid spend down, everybody goes through this thing called Medicaid spend down. I don't care if you have 10 million to your name, if you have $40 left to your name and you're 80 years old and you're in a nursing home. We all go through this spend down and what it just means is you spend all your assets on your care before Medicaid picks up. So if you gotta spend all of your assets in your care, you're basically financially destitute. But there's two qualifications, okay? Because people try to use these loopholes to get around it, we have to qualify two ways. You need to qualify via income and assets, okay? So let's just say you go into a nursing home and you're married and spouse is at home and we have an income limit we have to qualify for. Let's just say you're somebody who has $400,000 left in assets. Well, for starters, you have to spend all those dollars down until you get down to about $128,000. When you spend all those assets down into your care, you're literally putting checks and paying the nursing home 
right? And so it goes down to somewhere around 128,000. It depends on the state that you live in. Then Medicaid will consider you. So this is part of the Medicaid spend down, but then they look at the second part. It's called income. And so they typically, depending on the state, only allow you to keep between $2,000 to $2,600 in income. So if you're a household that spend our assets down to $128,000 to get part of your care covered for, and now they have to take part of your income away and you're used to getting $4,500 in income every month, the spouse in the house only gets to keep between $2,000 and $2,600, depending on the state you live in. That leaves a spouse in a house financially destitute. But Medicaid says, okay, your spouse that's still living in a house can keep that part of the income. They can keep $128,000 in assets, and they can keep one house and one car. When you're used to living on $4,500 in income or anything over that number, and you're living off your assets, you are really in harm's way. People run out of money. They end up having to sell everything they have, and they're standing at the front door with a bag in their hand at their kid's house. And the question is, do you want that to happen? And if you don't, you have to start pre-planning. And I'm not talking about pre-planning, gifting money away early, but we do need to talk about that because there's some loopholes that you need to know. So you can start gifting money, um, but there is a look back period of five years, 60 months. So if you're going into the nursing home, you think in two years, it's not like you can really time this thing, it just happens. And you're like, okay, I'm gonna go into a nursing home in two years, so it's kind of how my body feels and you're just starting to really go downhill. And you start gifting money away by the droves. You give 100000 here and your daughter, 100000 there to your to son. Guess what? Medicaid is not going to cover you because they're going to say, well, we do a five-year look back and you can't give that kind of money away over that five-year period. But if you happen to gift that money away in year six or seven, they're not going to go back that far. So you kind of got to plan this. So this leads me to also say, we start gifting some of our money to our beneficiaries now. Um, 10 years before we had baby. That's something to think about. That's something we will talk to you about if that's even something necessary to do um, because there's other loopholes and trusts that you can create that we'll talk about in a few minutes. So let's, let me get back on track here. So we talked about income and assets and the spend down and the look back period. So don't think you can just all of a sudden start gifting your money away and hiding it because they're gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna know you had it and they're gonna say, sorry, we're not gonna cover you. And now your kids have to take care of you. And so that's kind of a scary thing. I know I don't want my kids taking care of me. Now, let's talk about what they're counting as countable assets when they're doing this spend down. They have cash, savings accounts, vacation homes, a second home, retirement accounts, CDs, mutual funds, stocks. Um, and it does vary by the state, so I do know that. And so when they count all these assets up, you got to get those puppies down all the way to $128,000 before Medicaid will pick up the bill. So once you do pick up the bill 100%, so if you're paying $80,000 a year in long-term care, they're going to pay for it. But don't forget, if there's a spouse still in the house, the income comes down for them. So that's what we have to look at. Now, let's talk about the spend now. There are some loopholes. And I have to also let you guys know, as a disclosure, I am not an attorney. We do sit down with attorneys and elder attorneys with our clients. And so I know enough to get in trouble when I'm speaking here to know that the loopholes work very well. And I do advise if you have a family member or you are feeling like, hey, I'm having some memory issues or you're worried about this, you know, come and talk to us and we'll tell you, you know, next directions and work with an elder attorney. They cost on average between $3,000 and $5,000, but to preserve hundreds of thousands of dollars in assets, they are worth every dollar. And so um, we've sat with many of them and learned a lot. So what we've learned is that if you have assets and there's $400,000 there and you own a home, you can start pouring money into your home for home improvements. We need a roof, we need an AC, you know, especially if that house was gonna go to a beneficiary or something, you're kind of putting your inheritance back into the house. You can put a pool in the house. So you can spend that money down quickly on things that you need, vehicle repair or purchase, um, you can pay off debt. So if you have debt, you can take those dollars so that um, it doesn't go to the nursing home, pay off debt. And you can also purchase an annuity. So there's some annuity planning when it comes to these Medicaid spend downs and preserving your assets. And we had to do that with a client of ours last year. It was um, you know, an unfortunate event, but 
We wanted to preserve as much money for the spouse in the house um, because they couldn't afford to keep paying the nursing home. So this is what we had to do. So loophole, right? There's another thing that you guys can do. There's, there's trust. There's the irrevocable trust. We've talked about that in one of our segments. Irrevocable trust means that you can't irrevoke it. I mean, what it is is what it is. And we, we call these also income trusts. So you can put assets in this trust and take an income from it and we can preserve those assets. So there's lots of loopholes. You know, you don't just have to go out and buy long-term care because I know, I know, I don't want to buy long-term care insurance streets because I'm too young, I can't afford it, or I'm too old and I can't afford it, or I'm at the ripe age, but I, I have, you know, diabetes or have health issues and nobody's going to cover me. And so the other thinking is you go back down from 2008 when the markets crashed, so many people started dropping their long-term care policies because they couldn't afford them anymore. They could barely afford to pay mortgages and, and, and keep up with um, regular the bu budget and income needs. So a lot of people dropped it. So then there became this motto and there was a slang saying, if I don't use it, I don't want to lose it. So people stopped really buying long-term care policies. So then there was this another wave of, okay, if I don't use it, I don't want to lose it. So then there was this new um, hybrid way of pro protecting some of your, your, your assets in your care when you go into long-term care and it's life insurance. So you actually can buy a life insurance policy. It's just built out just for death benefit, nothing else that doesn't run out to your 120 years old and you can accelerate the death benefit. And honestly, I'm in, I'm in a huge favor of that because I've seen so many people use long-term care policies, not be able to get all the money out of it not even be able to use it, jump through hoops, had to pay the bill first, and it was an incredible headache. Why I like a life insurance policy now as a better option, basically, if you have a $500,000 death benefit and you accelerate the death benefit, most policies, if they have that long-term benefit rider built into it, they allow you to accelerate the death benefit at 2% on average, okay? Depending on your age, but it's typically 2%. 2% of $500,000 is $10,000 a month. That is $120,000 $120, a year. You can use it for up to four years. So I think it's a lovely idea because a lot of times you buy these policies, you don't even use them. Here, if you buy a life insurance policy and you pay for it for five or seven or 10 years, that's how I prefer people to do it so that you don't have a payment for the rest of your life. Um, if you don't use it, somebody's going to get a $500,000 tax-free inheritance. It's a beautiful thing. So if you don't use it, somebody finally gets to use it. So your money's being well spent, you can leave a nice inheritance, or you leave a long-term care benefit tax-free to your spouse that might have survived you. So it's more flexible. You can use it for home health care. As long as you have two activities of daily living you can't do, bathing, dressing, toileting, all that stuff. If you ever come to one of my um, Zinni U classes we have in Gainesville and Ocala and Beverly Hills, we talk all about this in more detail. Um, you know, that is how you turn on these policies. So it's a nice option and, um, it's, and, and they are affordable. And if some people are looking for a place to park their RMD money when you're having to take money out of your IRAs or you just have cash, you're thinking, what do I do with it? Well, find a life insurance policy for a couple of years and then that works just the same. Okay. So let me make sure I covered all my angles because there's so much. I could talk two hours about long-term care and the Medicaid spend down. Just remember a couple of rules. They look at income and they look at assets. You spend everything down. They pay for your care 100%. Here's the deal. You don't know what nursing home you would even go into because if all of a sudden this happens, now you have to apply for a nursing home and there's typically a waiting list. There's only a couple of Medicaid beds in each nursing home. So if you live in Ocala, you can end up in Orlando. If you live in Gainesville, you can end up in Ocala. And so that's the other headache. If you don't pre-plan, you're not already in there paying a bill, then you're just kind of stuck going wherever you want to go, or wherever they push you, I'm sorry. So if you had a life policy and you could fund some of your care at the beginning, and then you ran out of it, then you're already there and you're planted. You're already first in that waiting list. So that's a great thing. And don't forget, for the, the people who are, are, are veterans or you have TRICARE, there's some benefits there. They actually give you dollars. There's actually veterans' homes that you can go to that they give you care. Um, but there is a, a rank and an order when it comes to how much care and who gets first come, first serve. So, again, you're at the will of 
um, where you stand, which is unfortunate. So again, there's so much to talk about Medicaid. Just know Medicare does not cover long-term care. Medicaid does not cover long-term care until you're financially destitute. And I've seen it ruin people's and families' retirement plans. Don't let that happen to you. So if you need a second opinion on your health care and long-term care planning and Medicaid, make sure you come in and see us. Um, you can find us at zinniawealth.com. There's a Calendly section. You just type in the time and date you want to uh, phone you, and we can talk to you for 15 minutes. No cost. It's free. We'll see if we can direct you somewhere or if we can help you. Very simple stuff. So, and uh, maybe I'll have a long-term care guide um, soon on my website. So remember, go to zinniawealth.com. We have a ton of guides that talk about everything that we talk about on this show, but in more detail. So it might be very helpful. So that ends our Zinnia U segment and our education segment, pouring out as much information as I can in a half an hour. I try to keep this to a half an hour, so I'm going to move a little bit quicker now. Um, and if there's any questions, Mike behind the scenes, my producer will let me know. And I know I did answer some of them along the way. Okay, let's talk about travel tips. Who doesn't love a good travel tip? So I found this idea, you listen to Clark Howard, in some areas you don't get Clark Howard, but he's always giving you a travel tip or a coupon. So I was like, let's do that. So we're finding travel destinations you can drive to, because people aren't flying and not doing cruises, that you can go within a half an hour to an hour and a half from the Gainesville, Ocala, Beverly Hills area, um, and definitely longer for Orlando. So here's one I really like. So I'm, I like old towns and charms and so on and so forth, but we're gonna spotlight Newberry. Newberry has some really neat restaurants. They have a really famous place for burgers, by the way, like big, big burgers. We won't talk about that today, but what we're spotlighting, it's about a 35 minute drive from Gainesville and about 45 minute drive from Ocala, okay? And it's called Dudley Farm Historic State Park. This place is so cool because this, during September and October months, they do a corn maze and the kids just have an incredible ball out there and they're running up and down mazes and you know, all that fun stuff all kids should be doing and tuckering them out and they get candy too and lots of games, so on and so forth. So that during the September and October months, it's very fun, but all year round, you know, they have this, this family, I'm gonna read it because I don't wanna skip anything, family uh, farm. It, it has old school furnishings from like the 1880s. I mean, I love that kind of stuff. I don't know if you guys do. Um, they have interesting kitchen build out. They have general stores, post office, cane serve complex. I just like going and buying these little things here and there. And I could do a full day of it. So if you like doing that kind of stuff too, or you're married and you have a spouse that likes doing this, this could be a fun treat for her or him. Okay. Uh, what else? So they always, so they don't always have the cornfield mazes, by the way, I have to let you know there. Um, but one of the restaurants that we picked was Wood Yard Grill. They have excellent barbecue and burgers. So anybody knows me, I love a good old hamburger and I love barbecue, but if you can put barbecue on a hamburger, we're in business, right? Don't forget that um, over EVA, gotta put that on there. But um, the Wood Yard Grill, excellent. That, would, that was probably our top, top, top pick for that area. Um, they also have trivia night every Thursday, starting at 7 p.m. So that's night nice that they're actually doing trivia night where you're masks, of, of course, but that gets you out, gets you to do something. Great idea. Um, and also Mondays, kids eat free. Can't miss a kid eat free deal. So those deals are still going on. So that's great. Um, last discount, local discount. I know some of the you listening might not have it, but Costco's is having a nice little offer right now. So if you do go to Costco's out of town, Listen, teachers, right now, you get a $30 Costco shop card if you sign up for their new membership. That's a good deal. Um, and if you're not a teacher, they're also doing two other offers. You get $10 Costco shop card with a gold card membership or a $20 shop card with executive membership. So that was the best deal we could find of the week for um, local stuff. But hey, a couple bucks here. If I can go somewhere and buy a couple of free pieces because they're giving me these cards, I'm in. I'm kind of a discount shopper. You all will learn that about me. Okay, let's focus on our last segment, doing good. Um, I think what we want to do, Mike, are we going to put up the masks first? Okay, so let's talk about masks before I talk about doing good. So here's the deal with masks. So we talked about masks earlier. They might make it a statewide mandate to wear masks. And so we have the blue mask or we have the colorful mask. And so the, the blue masks are the more sur surgical 
um, ones they want you to wear. So it, so here's the deal. If you are, you know, elderly or if you have any health conditions, they want you to wear these more surgical type masks because they have three times more of the protection, which I get. And I want you to do that versus fabric masks. So if you, if you don't have COVID and you don't have a health condition and you're not, you know, a tipping age of over 60, they're saying you could wear these uh, more fabricy masks. And Etsy, I love Etsy, by the way. You can buy masks on Etsy, but you can figure out the, the fabric on there. You can do it on Pinterest. But you can actually go order masks over at um, Vista Print. These uh, masks that you see here, um, they're very popular. There's colorful ones, there's plain ones. Um, but basically, it's this fabric, and you can still use those. And they are the number one ranked masks right now. And I have a, a mask, and I don't have it on me. Hold that thought. Let me show it to you. Okay, I've never done that before, but so the masks I really like are they're really thin and they're not too long. So these are my favorites. I'm going to compare the long ones. Here's the long one. So I, I'll make my kids wear the long ones. They're a little hotter, but this is some thin material. And I love these because you just pop them over. You know, I don't wear jewelry uh, necklaces. So it's kind of my new deal is my dad did this growing up my whole entire life. He always had a scarf around his neck. So all you do, you pop it on, it's loose, it's covering everything you need. And if I could just explain, this stuff is amazing. Just wash it every couple of days. And so I bought a bunch of them. <laughs> so I'll leave my mask on for the rest of the show. So these are more for people who are, don't have the COVID who uh, are, are healthier. And the whole reason for the mask is for the people who do have COVID and that kind of the pandemic and they're just, ugh, it's supposed to protect from other people getting it. So they tell us when we wear a mask, it doesn't protect us from other people, but it helps our germs. I don't know. Like I say, we can never get a real answer, but just know you can get masks on Etsy. There's surgical masks for the people who really need them. And then you have the fabric masks that we are allowed to wear. And I should be wearing my red, white, and blue mask. So that's the mask story. All right, let's move on to doing good, our last piece here. So we'd like to showcase just really cool people doing incredible things. And Mike, are we doing the lottery one first? Okay, so lottery. So these these two guys, they've been buddies forever. They always promised each other, if you we win the lottery, we're going to split it. And they've been doing this for 40 years. And finally, one of them won. And guess what? They still split it. They still honored the deal um, because they used to buy tickets all the time. But as they got older, they didn't buy as many tickets, but they still honored the deal. And I thought that was really cool. And the guy in the right, he looks really familiar. Honestly, he's not a client of mine, but if you're watching. I would be happy to manage your money. <laughs> so anyways, I want to showcase them because I thought it was incredible. Would you share your money if you won the lottery? That's always my question. I have a family that I said I would always split my, my money um, and I have other family members says, oh, we'll give about a hundred grand. So I'm sure everybody has their own deals, but I just had to showcase it. So it was fun. Last but not least, Mike, what's our last one? Okay. That was it then. Okay, good. So we did one doing good. You guys know all about the discounts this week. Listen, uh, retirement isn't easy. My job is, you know, to have some fun and inspire you, but really educate you every week, every Wednesday, starting August uh, 12th at 3.30. Um, do a fun fun trivia, get you involved, send some checks out to charities because of it, and just inform you, educate you, and get you to retirement and beyond because it's not easy. And I know we have all ages watching this Facebook page. You might just be starting out. And, you know, we want to help as many people as we can. And there is a right way to get to retirement. And, and we want to show you how, and we want to get to the retirement and beyond. So don't forget, go to zinniawealth.com. You go there, there is a little red book to retirement. It's free. It's 37 pages. Everybody should be downloading it. It's free. And it really talks about the thing you need to know right now. It doesn't matter how old you are. So do that. You want to set an appointment with us, go to the website. There's a, a little box at the bottom. And it just gives you some times for 15 minutes for a call. And if you need a second opinion, this is what I'm here for. If not now, I'll be here for a long time. Cross my fingers. Praise Jesus. Let's hope that works out well. And um, again, live by design and not by default. And we'll see you here next week. 
She is a financial planner and advisor. She's the founder and president of Zinnia Wealth Management. She's also a popular radio show host. There's a way to have the money to market and have protected growth. This holistic approach will help people get to and through retirement. Absolutely. You have to change the way that you think. It's not about having these double digit returns anymore. Things are changing and you have to have an advisor that's keeping up with the changes. Your outcome is going to become very desirable if you have some sort of coach helping you along the way. And our next recipient from the Media and Communications XB, Sharice. 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 Sharice Rivers. Do not have to risk all your money in the market to survive because it's about the retirement dream.